Hey everyone, welcome back to Bearded Bastards Outdoors, your go-to channel for everything wilderness and outdoor survival. I'm Patrick, I'm a retired Green Beret, and I share my knowledge with you for absolutely free to help show you some tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way and in my hobby of being out and about in the wilderness. And today I have a very exciting video to share with you. By popular demand, we're going to uh, go over how to make char material. And the reason I'm doing this is I just got off of a two week training where I was training, um, damn, over a thousand cadets uh, in the junior ROTC program in my area. And part of what I shared with them was how to make char material and the benefits of using it versus other fire making material and uh, the and the value that it brings in a lot of instructors um, we're wanting more information and so I'm making this video and I'm gonna put it onto my blog site which I'll drop a link right here and, and in the description also where it'll have a step-by-step -step so you can use it for future use but any anyhow why do we need char why do we need to worry about char cloth you know I get thousands of comments seems like a day where like I'll just use a lighter well awesome <laughs> okay lighters work great duh so but what we're taught but what we're doing right now is we're gonna go over like char cloth is a part of like mission planning mission prep right and yeah like maybe going hunting in the Rocky Mountains isn't exactly like a mission but you should think of it like a mission because or at least I do because it's a systematic approach to getting ready to go so that you don't miss anything. And so there's different steps where you, you know, you understand the, yeah, the, the terrain and the hydrology and the, um, the weather and, 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 you know, key terrain and things like that. You understand all of these things. So if you do get in trouble, you're able to like, you know, get out of trouble. Um, and so one of those mission planning things is, of, of course, we have to make sure that we pack accordingly, pack according to our priorities of work. Our priorities of work are just what that sounds like. They are the essential tasks that need to be done before we worry about anything else. So I don't need to pack, you know, um, I don't know, tuna packets to, for something to eat because I'm a big guy if I don't have anything to make a fire with. That'd be stupid. So it's just a systematic approach to getting ready to go out and about. The number one priority of work is fire because without fire, we can't cook food. We can't get warm if we're subject to hypothermia or pneumonia or whatever, or cold weather injuries. Um, cook food, sterilize water, uh, sterilize um, equipment if I need to puncture myself for whatever reason like a blister or do some quick first aid I can sterilize a needle or what have you uh, field expedient um, signal for help um, defend against predators uh, keep myself warm like I mentioned and also give a cycle if there's like a psych psychological um, false sense of security and false sense of comfort comfort and I would rather have a false sense of comfort than no comfort at all so um, so yeah that's why we want fire to be our number one um, priority at least in my opinion you might have a different opinion that's fine but my opinion is fires number one next comes shelter but we'll get into that some other time so why we make char material we make we make char material before we go out you know it's not like we we can make it while we're out but you know you know you need fire to make char so it's like oh you need fire to make fire and it just kind of seems like pointless and redundant right so we make this prior to and you make it out of anything that's cotton material cotton related cotton material that's the easiest way to do it can't do it with anything polyester or anything um or else it just turns into like melted glass or wax or whatever it turns it's, it's just it's ugly but cotton material is what you want and the easiest thing I, I recommend is cotton balls why cotton balls well one cotton balls are really easy to light but secondly uh you can get how many comes in this this comes with 125 from walgreens cost me two bucks not a lot of money i got 125 of these i can make 125 fire starters off of this one thing and i don't have to you know get an old pair of socks rip up some underwear t-shirts whatever i just go to the store grab myself a bunch of cotton balls and get and get to work because this is like stupid easy to do char material is very valuable because um it catches a spark 
so easily. And I'm going to demonstrate that later. You can, you, with magnifying glass or anything that emits a spark, it will catch. You can catch and you can transfer that ember into your bird's nest and into your fire um, very easily. And you can get a fire done in seconds. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you my equipment. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, what I what I need is I need a source of flame. I am under a burn ban right now, so I can't actually start a fire, but so I have my propane stove, okay? Um, I have a, a tin that I can put my material in and it'll create an airtight seal uh, so that it can char. This is just an Altoids tin can that I poked a hole in, okay? I have my lighter to light my propane torch. I got my cotton balls, like I already mentioned. And then I have my uh, bushcraft knife made here at the Bearded Bastards shop. Um, and we talk, we're gonna talk a lot more in the future about knife selection and uh, you know what kind of tangs you want, what kind of material you want. But um, of course, we always want a high carbon steel um, knife instead of a stainless steel. That way, whoop, broke, my, broke my piece of flint there. That way we can you know, get our sparks in the event we don't have any high carbon steel. So but first we get, uh, so before we get too involved with this, we need to understand what, how this works, okay? And the way fires work is we need three components and this is depicted by the fire triangle. The fire triangle states that we need three components in order to get the chemical reaction that is required for combustion and ignition. And that means that we need fuel, we need oxygen and we need heat. So we need fuel, anything that can sustain a uh, flame. We need oxygen to, uh, in order for the fire to breathe. And then we need a heat source or the ember. So what we're doing with this process uh, by using a tin can such as this is we are omitting oxygen out of the fire triangle. And again, because we're omitting that oxygen, we're not going to get ignition and combustion. We're only going to get a smoking effect. Now, that's what's happening inside the can. As the can is heated up, again, we're depriving it of oxygen, so it's not going to ignite inside of the can. Instead, the energy is going to cause this expansion. And, and as it smokes and it pulls all the impurities out of the cotton, it's going to emit a gas out of this vent hole. Okay, as this gas is coming out of, is escaping out of this vent hole, and as it's introduced to oxygen, it's going to ignite. And those gases are then going to be incinerated, for lack of better words. But also what's happening is that uh, it's creating a vacuum and it's further pulling, sucking out all of those other impurities and any, um, well, air that is in the, in the can. I know we said we're omitting oxygen, but you know, it's creating that vacuum is going to suck out anything and that else that's in that can. So, um, and while we're doing is we're, is we're watching that flame. It ignites. That's awesome. And we wait for that flame to go out. We give it like an extra 10 seconds. I find works best. And then, you know, we're, we're, we're good. We'll check on it. Okay. So let's get her done. All right. So let's go ahead and get our fire going here. And while that's cooking up, let's go ahead and load this up. Now I find three at a time works best because we still want to have some air. We still want to have some airflow in there. We don't want to jam jam it pack tight. Okay. So I find three works best. So we just put those three in there. Got our flame going. We just set it on top and we wait. Okay, we see the gases escaping. It's pulling all of the impurities out of our material at this time. You see a very tiny flame in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm going to go out. 
but you can already see the cotton balls are charring in there. So again, I'm just gonna give it a few more seconds, just because. Okay. Go ahead and remove it from the heat. Bloop. Just like so. Okay, let's go ahead and see what we got now that this is cooled off. open it there it goes oh yeah those look good those look good those feel good feels very soft and pliable okay yep it's got a nice sheen to it those are excellent so now what's awesome about these i'm just going to take a little bit when we work with char we want to make sure that we get these fibers exposed, especially when we're dealing with, especially when we're talking about uh, with flint and steel. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to catch a spark with this. Okay, I got my piece of flint, put my piece of char on here, and I have my striker. Right there. There's my ember. Now I transfer that into my bird's nest and I got a fire that took me all of two seconds. The process took all of five minutes. Now again, when we talk about knife selection, again, because you might not have access to a file. So again, because you might not have access to a file, you need to have the, the appropriate knife. This is a high carbon steel, 1095 steel, made right here in the, in the shop. I've had it for a number of years. There it goes. And I got my ember. Okay, so very important that we have the right tools. We don't have like a stainless steel knife with us that wouldn't be able to do that. Now, as you can probably gather by looking at the background behind me, today is not a very good day to show off um, using magnifying uh, glasses for uh, starting a fire, but it's the same concept with your char material. You put it with your bundle and you just magnify the sun like you would like burning GI Joes or ants or Barbies or whatever you used to do when you were a kid. Uh, but they have this really cool thing right here. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. You can get like 20 for 10 bucks. Um, and it's called a Fresnel lens. I'll put a link in the description as well. But it, it, it's like a credit card. It fits, fits into your wallet with ease. And it's just a magnifier. So, you, so I mean, again, you, you're doing pre-mission uh, planning and preparation. Get yourself one of these. It fits easily into your, um, into your kit. You get a piece of char material. Focus the sun on there. And get it lit. I mean, it, it, it's easy peasy, but I hope that you can see the value in this char material. Go out and try it. Again, it's so super simple. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. It doesn't take a lot of work. It's so simple. So go out and try this. Do yourself a favor and get and make a bunch of these if you're going to go out and then put them in a waterproof container because the last thing you need is for them to get wet and all that work just goes right down the drain. So keep them in a Ziploc bag, someplace safe. Um, so when you need them, they're there for you. And remember to prepare, train, survive. Catch you on the next one.